major sign and symptoms of BPD is impulsive and risky behavior. And under that category of impulsive and risky behavior, we have many actions that somebody can take. And in today's video, I want to talk about a few of those and why somebody with BPD would engage in those activities. So let's start today's video in discussing and deep diving on the concept of gambling and why someone with BPD would engage in that activity. Gambling is a very interesting aspect of the impulsive and risky behavior because, well, there's entertainment in it. There is the concept of elation when you win. Um, there's also the camaraderie, right? Because if you're gambling, if you're in a, you know, a gambling house or a poker house, there's other people there, there's camaraderie, there's action. There's also a way of getting your mind off of the situations that you're dealing with at home or in your own mind. And so it's a huge way to escape your reality. And in that escapism, it gives you something to super hyper-focus on. And so when somebody has BPD signs and symptoms, they need something to focus on outside of the things that are already taking up you know, their emotions and everything that's kind of deep down inside of them. And so that gambling gives them an aspect to really focus on. Another activity that is under the umbrella of impulsive and risky behavior when it comes to signs and symptoms of BPD is reckless driving. Reckless driving is a big one. I also like to talk about road rage because that also falls into the category. Very high speed, crisscrossing in lanes, going really, really high speeds and that can be that can give you elation that can give you make you feel better that can get your mind off something um, it can get the adrenaline running make you feel alive and that's a definite aspect here also again you know in that feeling of alive you overcome or stop thinking in the moment about the issues that you're dealing with in your life you stop thinking about the issues that you're dealing with with your relationships you stop thinking about the issues you're dealing with with your own relationship with yourself so in that moment you are sucked into that um, an overdrive you might say and the last one that I want to talk about in today's video is spending sprees or what I like to talk about retail therapy now spending sprees have a little bit of that gambling component because it feels like really good you, you feel elated when you're spending lots of money buying things and in that moment whatever you're buying is filling that void. It's feeling that void of fear, feeling that void of abandonment, feeling that void of being alone, feeling that void of not being enough, but it doesn't last a long time. Retail therapy, these things last for a little bit, but eventually over time, they actually make the person feel worse. And it's interesting when I've worked with clients who in the beginning, the spinning sprees were really taking them into another level where they're thinking, I don't have to feel my emotions. I don't have to think about the pain and agony of my marriage. I don't have to think about the pain and agonies that I have about myself. But as retail therapy continued, what I found is that those same clients would start hiding their purchases. So instead of bringing the stuff home that they had, they would hide it in their trunk, and not take it out for a very long time. I've also had clients who are married to people that have signs and symptoms of BPD, where an entire room is full of Amazon products, seven pairs of the same pants, 10 pairs of the same shoes, multiple aspects of that, things that they can't even use or, or do anything with. And so that can also create pain and suffering for the person with BPD too, because in the time, the buying of it gave you that feeling, but over time, that feeling of elation and being able to disconnect from emotion and escapism only lasts, it could last sometimes for days, even weeks before, maybe now only lasts for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. And so again, what I'm saying here, this impulsive and risky behavior is behaviors that we see with someone with BPD, but it's, there's a reason for it. They're avoiding it. They're trying to avoid their situation. They're trying to leave that emotional state for a moment, and they're trying to find some short-term solution. Unfortunately, it's obviously not long-term because all of these things have you know effects and side effects, but they all have repercussions. Um, and that's one aspect that's also challenging for someone with BPD is to realize that there are repercussions or to accept that or to even want to see that. And in the moment, nobody wants to see it, but eventually these repercussions come around and have to be dealt with. And that's one aspect that's also challenging for someone with BPD is to realize that there are repercussions or to accept that or to even want to see that. And in the moment, nobody wants to see it, but eventually these repercussions come around and have to be dealt with. That can be changed by someone with BPD to feel the victim reality and make themselves out to be the victim, or they can internalize it and even feel worse 
about what they've done, creating more emotional panic, creating more desire to escape and not having an outlet to escape to. I have many more aspects of the impulsive and risky behavior to cover in, a, in the next video. In the meantime, I wanna let you know, not everybody that's gambling, that's participating in reckless driving, that's road raging, um, and that's spending money and using retail therapy, not all, not everybody has BPD. These are, these are escapisms that a lot of us use, but I'm just talking about this in the concept of BPD for this video, but understand, you know, somebody doesn't have to have BPD to use these types of escapisms. These can be used a lot, but if we are escaping with gambling or reckless driving or spinning sprees, we need to be aware of what we're trying to escape from. And that's something that really needs to be understood. And if we don't understand what we're needing to escape from, we need to figure out how to do the due diligence or the cognitive behavioral therapy or the work that we need to do to really understand what that escape is about. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding some of these impulsive and risky behaviors and why somebody would actually do them. Uh, if you like this video and you, and you like the content, please give us a like. Also, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it when you subscribe. Also allows us to know that we're doing something right. Uh, in the comments section, you know, let me know, do you have a friend, family member, or spouse that's, that's dealing with one of these types of behaviors and, and how do you deal with it? Because it can be very hard and challenging to be able to not only understand why someone's doing, doing it, but also how do you looking in deal with it? And that's what I think is, is very interesting to know because many of us are dealing with this in a family dynamic and we need all the advice we can to really help each other. And hopefully this video can help you as well. In the meantime, you know what I'm gonna say, don't forget to live your true life.